Well, good morning. This is Joe. Welcome to the patio room. The sun is just coming up here, and uh, so it's going to be changing. But it's a nice morning to tap out some words on the old typewriter. And uh, uh, today I was going to talk a little bit about uh, my little uh, venture over the years in using this uh, kind of paper supply, which is an endless roll of paper. Well, it, I had known for a long time uh, that Jack Kerouac wrote one of the first drafts of On the Road with a roll of teletype paper. Uh, I knew that was a legend in circles of literature, but it wasn't until about 2008 time frame that uh, the famous scroll was on a traveling exhibit across the United States and it came through Santa Fe, New Mexico. I drove up to Santa Fe with a friend who was also interested in writing and we toured uh, this exhibit at the Palace of the Governor's Museum and it was fantastic. It was a 120 foot long scroll, single space typing and they had it in a big giant case and it was fantastic looking at that thing. And I had gotten interested in typewriters at the time and I thought how cool would that be to have an endless supply of paper you didn't have to keep changing paper and at the end of the page and all that so that's when I first started uh, thinking about finding a source of paper like that that I could type on. So I started uh, looking around for rolls of paper in the local hardware stores and art stores and of course in the art stores there's white paper uh, but it's way too wide and so I started looking and noticed in the hardware stores that they had rolls of brown paper that were about six inches wide used for masking while you're painting and I didn't want to type on brown paper six inches wide seemed maybe adequate but then I took a trip down to my auto parts uh, painting supply store this was a store specializing in painting supplies for painting cars and I came across this roll of 3M brand white uh, masking paper. And I started uh, blogging, uh, typewriter blogging, with this paper. So uh, it's six inches wide, and when I was blogging, I wanted a slightly narrower column of lines so that when I scan them, th the text would be a little bit bigger and easily readable. Um, so six inches was okay if you give it a really close margin to the edge. Uh, but I didn't really write on this stuff as a manuscript, mainly because uh, this paper is <clears throat> it's thinner than normal paper and kind of crinkly, as you can hear. And ink doesn't take to it all that well. And the reason why is because it's obviously intended to protect whatever surface is behind it from getting ruined with paint. Uh, and so, obviously an automotive uh, painting application. So it doesn't take liquids very well. The surface is kind of hydrophobic and so the ink doesn't really stick to it. So even a fresh ribbon, it's gonna be kind of a faint impression, not really dark. And so, and also the ink kind of smears uh, easily. There's a thumbprint here an inky thumbprint smudge. So ink kind of smudges on it real easy. And so I used it for quite a while. Um, I got a good deal on it. I think normally these were about $15 a roll and I think they charged me $5 because the cardboard core was deformed. But uh, it's a big enough core that you can put a broom handle through like I'm doing down here on the table here. But I used it for a long time and then uh, I was looking for a better solution. And so uh, one day I decided to do a search on Amazon for teletype paper, thinking, well, maybe they still sell teletype paper. And sure enough, they sell a material that they call teletype paper. We'll talk about that in a minute, but it basically comes in this big roll and it's eight and a half inches wide and it has a cardboard core uh, big enough in diameter to permit you to put a broom handle dowel uh, through it. And so the way I do this is I uh, use a couple discs of cardboard and uh, screw it into the ends of it and the dowel is long enough to sit into the, the scissor leg joint of my little folding tray table. And that gives me a source of uh, paper, eight and a half inch wide paper. But it's not the best 
paper. And so maybe I'm just a, a picky person, but you know, it seems like uh, this kind of paper was adequate in width, but really didn't have the right texture to write on, and it certainly didn't take ink very well. This paper is the right width, and the price is pretty decent, but it is poorer in quality than newsprint. It is really rag paper. It's the cheapest possible paper you could imagine. Uh, and it's not white colored. It's kind of a grayish cream color. I don't know if you can tell the difference in tone between these two, but it's definitely a darker, dingier paper. It's, it won't take correction tape all that well. Correction tape doesn't like to stick to it. Uh, and so you end up having to use an erasing pencil and it kind of tears holes in the paper. So yeah, I guess for first draft writing, I've used it and I continue to use it, but I still wish there was a regular white bond paper roll in eight and a half inch wide rolls that I could find. And that would be great. And then just yesterday, I was at my local <clears throat> big box office supply retailer store buying supplies for the little pinhole solar telescope viewing project. If you haven't seen that video, be sure to check it out. It's a cool idea. Uh, anyways, and so I naturally wandered down the aisle where they have rolls of white paper. Every time I go to that place, I'm always hoping against hope that I'll find an eight and a half inch wide roll of white paper. Well, they didn't have one again, like usual, but all you math geniuses out there, all you guys that know differential equations and all this, eight and a half times two is 17, if I'm not mistaken. And they have a roll of poster and banner paper, 50 foot long roll that is 17 inches wide. This roll of paper cost me $5. But the problem is it's not eight and a half inches wide, it's twice that, it's 17 inches wide. So I'm gonna have to do long division I'm gonna to have to divide this thing in half. Well, uh, so this is 17 inches wide, and, but it's covered in plastic. I think before I try cutting this in half, I'm gonna peel the plastic off, but I'd like to keep the roll tightly rolled together while I cut it, so I'm gonna wrap it in some tape and then mark a line for my cutting. It actually has paper already wrapped around it, so I'm just going to uh, see, put this tape roughly in the IR squared, all that good stuff. So eight and a half inches roughly is there. All right, we're ready for cutting. Okay, so I haven't actually ever done this before, so this is going to be live in on camera, and it could be a great disaster. But basically, we have our Delta Shopmaster saw, and <laughs> I have a fairly good blade with a fairly thin kerf to it. And uh, I'm going to try cutting this using reference this line that I put in here. Now this saw is pretty darn loud, so I'm going to have to get some ear, ear protection and I'm sure it's going to overpower the microphones on the camera. Well, here goes nothing. Let's see what happens here. That was kind of messy. Whew. Can you see it in the air? <laughs> I didn't know how it would cut. There's all this particles of paper floating in the air still, but hey, look at the cut on that. That's actually pretty dang close. I mean, it's better than I thought. I, I mean, this one here is a little bit of something going on there, but hopefully it'll be usable. I think I'm gonna 
clean one of these up and stick it on that broom handle, that dowel on the tray table and see what happens. Find the end of the tape here. Let's see here. Take off the label. And then it has a little adhesive starter thing, which I always hate because it tears the paper. Hmm, it's not very good. This is all live, unplanned, on camera. Okay, there we are. All right. Take off the screw and fender washer and the little disc. And there's the old rag paper. I guess the grandkids could draw on this stuff. I don't want to use it anymore. Well, the new roll is only 50 feet. It's not like a 700 foot roll of useless paper, but it only cost me uh, $5 for the whole 17 inch roll. So this is $2.50 for 50 foot usable 50 foot roll. And hey, it goes right on to my broom handle. And so let's get this put together. Okay, so a good question would be, which way do I want the paper to roll? So it's obviously curled quite a way easily this way, right? It's curled, so I'd like it to reverse curl as it goes through the roller of the platen. So that means that if I take the paper up like this, it's going to be rolling the same direction. So I'm going to flip it around so it rolls the opposite direction to the roller and the roller of the platen might help to straighten the paper out. Now let's straighten out. I'm doing this backwards anyways. Let's straighten out the paper. Okay. Well, let's try this out, shall we? Let's see, how about the quick brown fox? Ooh. The quick brown fawz. Five. I really think this is great paper. I mean, it's not just good white paper, but it's pretty nice paper for typing. Well, I'm really excited about this. I had to take the bull by the horns, though, and take that roll of art paper, banner paper, and cut it in half. And boy, did I make a mess in the garage. I'm going to have to clean that out. Man, there was paper dust everywhere floating around, and the camera is covered in white paper dust. But you know, I'm surprised the thing cut pretty well. And this does really write really nicely. Uh, I think this is going to be a solution. I can get this paper locally at my local uh, big box office supply retailer. I can cut them in half. Um, I'm excited. And in case you guys don't know why a person would want to do that, let me talk for a minute about that. I have no desire to be Jack Kerouac. I mean, nobody can be that. And there's no beat poetry movement going on or beat movement. That's not why you might want to write with an endless roll of paper. It's not an affectation to copy some famous writer back in the 50s or whatever. No, this is about, um, as I've discussed in other videos, this is about finding ways to make uh, manual typewriters a practical part of your writing life. And one of the principal ways that I do that is what's called first draft writing. The very primary early start to your creativity is when you just want to sit down and start putting words down on paper. And what facilitates that with manual typewriters is not having to stop to change the paper. If you can just keep slinging the carriage back and keep typing and keep putting words down, that's what really helps the writing process. And so that's what I'm interested in doing with this roll of paper is this non-stop, continuous stream of consciousness writing. Well, I hope this gives you guys some ideas for how you can uh, make your own usable, functional roll of pretty nice white paper, eight and a half inches wide. 
you just got to figure out how to cut it and uh, I don't know I don't think I'd be cutting it with a hacksaw by hand I think you need a power saw like this anyways until next time this is Joe Van Cleve and you have yourselves a great day